turn that on. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ricardo Sanchez. I am the chair um, of the uh, Communication and Public Education Committee. Welcome. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting being conducted in person via WebEx. The meeting is also being webcast. Participants watching the webcast will only be able to observe the meeting. Anyone interested in participating in the meeting should attend in person or join the WebEx meeting. Information and instructions are posted on our website. As, facili as I facilitate uh, this meeting, I will announce when we are accepting public comments. I have advised the meeting uh, moderator to allow two minutes to each individual providing comments. At appropriate times, we will begin taking comments at in-person locations in Sacramento, Los Angeles, followed by comments from individuals participating via WebEx. Uh, this approach is necessary to facilitate this meeting. I appreciate everyone's understanding as we navigate this hybrid meeting format. Before we get started, I would like to ask the meeting moderator uh, to provide general instructions on how to provide comments via WebEx. Uh, moderator? Uh, this is the moderator. For those joining us on WebEx today, we will be utilizing the WebEx question and answer feature and the hand raise features to facilitate public comment. When public comment is called, I will open up the question and answer feature and you will uh, hear me refer it to as the Q&A. And members of the public who wish to make a comment can click on the Q&A icon, type the word comment in the text box, and click the send button. Uh, to utilize the raise hand feature, you can simply click on the hand icon next to your name to raise and lower your hand. For those who have called into the meeting, you can uh, raise and lower your hand by clicking star three on your device. Um, we'll have instructions displayed on the screen during public comment. And after each um, public comment is taken from Sacramento and Los Angeles, we'll then move on to comments from WebEx. Uh, once again, you'll have two minutes to speak and a 10 second warning um, at that time. Once we meet the two minutes, uh, the individual's microphone will be muted and then I'll move on to the next person uh, who has requested public comment. Those are all my instructions. Thank you. We will now move to agenda uh, item A, which is a uh, call uh, to order here. Um, I call this meeting to order and we'll uh, take role to establish a quorum. Members, as I call your name, please remember to unmute your line before speaking. Um, Jose de la Paz. I'm present. Okay. Uh, Shirley Kim. Okay, Shirley is not with us today. Uh, Kula Coin. I hope I'm saying that right. President Koenig. Oh, okay. Thank you and welcome to the board. Uh, Nicole Thibault? No, she's not present? Okay. Okay. Uh, Jess, Jason Weiss? I am here. Okay. And myself, Ricardo Sanchez, public member, uh, present. Um, thank you. Let's move on to um, item B. <clears throat> The committee will now hear public comments on matters that are not on this agenda. The committee cannot discuss or take action on any matter raised here except to place it on a future agenda. Are there any public comments regarding items not uh, on this agenda? Moderator, will you open uh, the lines for public comment? Uh, this is the moderator. Would Sacramento. you like to check with Sacramento? <laughs> Would you like to check with the uh, physical locations first? Yes. No, uh, no comments from Los Angeles. Okay. Any uh, comments from the uh, Sacramento area? Uh, seeing none, can we? Um, uh, any comments from the WebEx? Uh, this is the moderator and at the direction of the chair, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment for items not on the agenda, uh, please click that Q&A icon located at the bottom right-hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand feature. 
I'll pause a moment to allow the public time to access that Q&A panel and submit their requests. All right, uh, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yeah, yes, please close that. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to item C. Um, this is approval of the July 14th, 2021 Communication and Public Education Committee meeting minutes. Uh, a draft of the minutes is in attachment one. Uh, members, are there any comments on the minutes? I would also entertain uh, a motion and a second on the minutes. Yes, Jose, I motion to approve. I would second, Mr. Chair, this is Jason. All right, thank you. Uh, before we vote, is there any public comment on the minutes? Uh, moderator, please open the lines and let's start with the uh, LA group. No comments from Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, Sacramento, say none. Um, moderator, can you open the lines for uh, comments via the WebEx? Uh, this is the moderator and at the direction of the chair, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click that Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand feature. I'll pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q&A panel and submit their requests. All right, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Okay, thank you. Um, I will now call for members to vote. Members, as I call your name, please remember to unmute your line before speaking. Okay, and Shirley. Okay, uh, Jose de la Paz. Yes. Okay, uh, Nicole. Oh, she's not here. That's right. Uh, Debbie Veal. Oh, she's not on here. Jason Weiss. Yes. Sorry. And uh, Kula. Kula. Yes. Thank you. And myself, so yes. So uh, passes. Uh, thank you. We will now move on to item D, approval of the Jan. Oh no, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. Yeah, that is. Yeah, January. Excuse me. Uh, this is a approval of the January nineteenth, twenty twenty two communication and public education committee meeting minutes. A draft of the minutes is in attachment to. Members, are there any comments on the minutes? I would also entertain a motion and second on the minutes. I would so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I would second, second that. Okay. Jose. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we vote, is there any public comments on the minutes? Moderator, please open the lines for uh, the Los Angeles group. Hi, could we get clarification if there's any public comment on the motion in the LA location, please? Sorry about that, the uh, mute button here. Uh, no, there is no members from the public wishing to make comments. Thank you. Uh, in Sacramento, any, qu any comments from the public? Hearing none, can we uh, get uh, public comments from uh, WebEx? Uh, this is the moderator and at the direction of the chair, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access that Q&A panel and submit their requests.
All right. Uh, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, please close those. Close that. Thank you. I will uh, now call uh, roll for members to vote. Members, please remember to unmute your line before speaking. Uh, Jose de la Paz. Yes. Uh, Jason. Sky. Yes. And Kula. Yes. Thank you. Myself, so yes. Um, thank you. We will now move on to item uh, uh, D. Um, updates on communication and public education activities by staff. Um, I'm going to um, turn it over to Ann and uh, maybe she can give us a little, something a little brief on the script, staff outreach, news media, and webinars. Happy to do so. So we have released the first issue of the script for the year. It focused on changes in pharmacy law as well as several um, other items, including um, the COVID vaccine program, those kinds of things that are intended to help our licensees both comply with pharmacy law and then um, help them to learn how to operationalize some of the issues that are facing things. We also talked about responsibilities of the pharmacist in charge, as well as some of the strategies that can be employed to uh, prevent uh, uh, drug diversion by um, employees. So we do hope to have the next one out this summer. Uh, we'll highlight again changes in the law that have occurred primarily through regulations, as well as some um, practice uh, information. And typically as part of the enforcement uh, committee reports in July, we talk about trends in enforcement citations, common citations, those types of things. So typically we'll, we'll also include that in the summer edition if that information has been released publicly. Again, it's intended to provide a education. Um, with respect to staff outreach, uh, we did have another very successful prescription drug abuse prevention, what a pharmacist needs to know training. Uh, over 500 people attended the day-long event. It is an event that is provided um, free of charge and we're conducting it via WebEx. Um, right through COVID, but uh, the participation rates have been great. Um, based on the feedback, uh, I think that we'll probably continue to at least have some sort of web training, um, but we may try to uh, resume some in person as well. Fantastic engagement by those that are participating. We receive a number of comments throughout the day. The modules include um, several different areas, just for those that are not familiar. We have a module on pharmacy law, but we also have a module on how to prepare for board inspection. We have a module on corresponding responsibility. And then we also have one on um, actions that pharmacies can take to prevent uh, robberies and thefts, um, those types of things. So it's really focused on operational issues. We also also um, invite the DEA to provide a presentation as well from their perspective on regulating pharmacies and actions that pharmacies can take um, with respect to um, controlling dangerous drugs. And then we also invite the Department of Justice to give presentations on the CURES program, which is the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program. And so it's very well received. We typically have very good comments. and. Um, one, I suppose, one of the upsides of COVID, if there was one, is that this training we um, had always just given in, in person, and with COVID, we've transitioned to WebEx, and so that has really expanded our audience. Um, so unless you have questions on that, we are also um, approaching graduation season uh, for the schools of pharmacy, and so for schools that are interested, um, board staff, we will provide presentations to uh, students that are getting ready to graduate to discuss the pharmacist licensure application process. And we try to review common deficiencies and pitfalls because our goal is to provide education up front so that they can avoid those challenges. And so when it comes to examination day, they're just ready to focus on taking the exam and you know continue on in their profession as pharmacists. So that is um, the primary um, outreach areas. Um, with your uh, approval, I would like to turn it over to Bob Davila, who really focuses on many different um, activities for this committee, but including media. Yes, please, Bob. Hello, uh, this is Bob Davila, Public Information Officer. Uh, uh, on the uh, agenda under uh, item three, uh, it's regarding uh, media outreach, and we have uh, the staff has answered questions for media on several items uh, listed in uh, attachment three. Uh, I won't go through them uh, unless you'd like other pretty standard questions we get from reporters on various 
stories. And then finally, uh, on webinars, um, on, on August, on April 5th, I'm sorry, April 6th, the board did launch finally our online training webinar for pharmacists furnishing HIV prep and PEP. Uh, the webinar is 90 minutes long as, and includes an assessment that pharmacists must pass with a 70% score to receive a certificate of completion pursuant to California Code of Regulations, Section 1747. In addition, the board is awarding one and a half hours of CE credit to pharmacists who successfully complete the training. Uh, board staff have reviewed initial results which have come in this month in the past three weeks, uh, and those results indicate some licensees are not viewing the entire presentation. Instead, they are skipping ahead to complete the assessment in itself. Staff believes section 1747 requires pharmacists to view the entire 90 minutes, to review the entire 90 minutes, as well as pass the assessment to successfully complete the training. So regardless of their assessment score, licensees who do not view the entire webinar will not receive CE credit nor a certificate of completion. Instead, they will be advised that they did not meet the minimum requirements for completion and, missed re and must retake the webinar. Uh, I do have a, a, a few stats here on the pharmacists who have so far completed the uh, HIV uh, PrEP and PEP training webinar. Uh, as of um, today, about, 100 and, um, we, about 126 licensees who have viewed the webinar have received passing scores as well as the e-credit. Uh, 36 pharmacists who viewed the webinar uh, did not obtain the 70% passing score and so did not receive a certificate of completion nor CE credit. And we have a total of about 259 others who have viewed the webinar but have not viewed the entirety or, or just are not taking the assessment so they are sort of graded as incomplete. But so far it looks like uh, overwhelmingly the majority of pharmacists who are viewing this training webinar are uh, viewing the entire 90 minutes and are receiving certificates of completion with scores of at least 70% or higher on the training. Uh, that's the update on the uh, HIV PrEP HEP webinar. We also want to update the uh, board on the law webinar. Uh, we have developed updated materials for the board's law webinar with new pharmacy laws and regulations for 2022. Staff will incorporate the material into a new webinar to be completed by summer. As you may recall, California Code of Regulations section 1732.5b requires that at least two of the 30 CE hours required for pharmacist license renewal must be completed by participating in law ethics, law and ethics courses provided by the board. Uh, this concludes this item on the section. Uh, if there are any questions from the committee members, I'm happy to answer them. Hi, Bob, this is Jason. Um, real quickly, I just want to confirm that at the uh, HIV prep PEP uh, webinar, um, that attendees, they are instructed to go and watch for the full 90 minutes, correct? Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, they, are, they are on our website where, we, uh, where they launched the webinar, the, the video. Uh, there is information there regarding that it's a 90 minute program. They have to watch the full thing. They have to achieve a 70% score on the assessment in order to pass uh, and receive CE as well as a certificate of completion. Okay, and those that neglected to do so can just get, have another whack at it. Absolutely, they can, they can okay. take it yes, again. Okay, yes. great. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. I'd, I'd like to um, first uh, acknowledge and thank uh, Ann, Bob, and the staff here at the uh, Board of Pharmacy. They do a lot of work. They do some fabulous work, and uh, they do a lot of research, and they put a lot of these programs together where the board can review it and approve it and improve on, but a lot of that work is done by the staff, and they hardly ever get acknowledged, and I'd like to just say thank you. You guys do fabulous work. Um, is there any uh, committee member comments? I apologize, Mr. Chair. I kind of skipped ahead. Um, I, I, I do want to reiterate a thank you to uh, staff uh, for all your hard work, and I think all of my questions are already asked. Thank you. Thank you. Um, seeing uh, none, is there any uh, public comments from the Sacramento area? Seeing none. Uh, any public comments from the Los Angeles area? No public comments from Los Angeles. Thank you, Jose. Um, is there any uh, public comments via WebEx? This is the moderator and at the direction of the chair, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access the Q&A panel and submit their requests.
All right. Uh, seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, please. Okay. Um, a last item is item E, future meeting dates. Uh, additional meetings for the Communication and Public Education Committee in uh, 2022 are uh, Tuesday, July 19th, 2022, uh, Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. And uh, unless there are any members of uh, member or public comments, this concludes our agenda today. Thank you for your participation and uh, this meeting uh, is adjourned. Thank you.